Hi everyone, it's Miss Kaylee, and today we're going to be reading a book called Growing Trees. The author of this book is Judith Bauer Stamper, and it is illustrated by Wesley Lowe. Remember, our author is the person who writes the words, and our illustrator is the person who draws the pictures. This is the front cover, this is the back cover, and this is the spine. This is called the title page because it says the title again. Which the title is called Growing Trees. This is a picture of my tree and me. We've been growing together for a whole year. It all began last summer when I went to visit a national forest with my mom and dad. A forest is a great place to learn about trees. There are trees as far as you can see. We took a hike with a forester, an expert on taking care of trees and in the wild. The forester showed us small young trees and big old trees that were like towering giants. He explained the life cycle of a tree. It all starts out with a seed. In the spring, the warm sun makes a seed germinate or begin to grow. The seed sprouts a small root that grows down into the ground. The root absorbs water and minerals from the soil. Next, a small stem pushes up out of the ground and grows into two tiny seed leaves. The leaves use sunlight to give the tree energy to grow. A new growth, called a shoot, appears at the tip of the stem. Larger leaves grow from the shoot. shoot. The seedling is on its way to becoming a tree. So on this side we have the seed going into the ground. Then we have the seed case which is goes around the seed and down here you see this line which is the root that goes into the ground the root brings up water and minerals to the seed to make it grow then we have the stem which grows up out of the ground which holds it up but we still have our roots in the ground then we have the stem down here it's just longer now because it's grown up and we still have our roots, but if you can see, the roots have gotten bigger, and there's more roots sticking out of them. And then we have leaves growing out of the stem and the shoot. So the stem is down here, and it comes up to these two seed leaves, and then the shoot is what comes out and grows the leaves. And we still have our roots that are growing bigger down here in the dirt. The young tree keeps growing if it gets enough water and sunlight to survive. In its next year of life, the tree grows buds that may turn into leaves. Soon, the tree has branches, a woody tr trunk, bark, and lots of leaves. Each year, the tree grows taller and its trunk gets wider. A forester can tell how old a tree is by counting its rings. A tree trunk has one ring for each year it has been alive. This tree was more than a hundred years old. A forester can also find out how old a living tree is by using a tree borer or a tool that takes out a small part of the tree without hurting it. So over here we're looking at her tree and it's showing us the leaves and the branches and the trunk. And she's making sure that it's getting enough sunlight. Then on this page we can see the forester and he's showing us the rings from this tree. If you look really close you can see all those rings. Oh, focus. There we go. Now we got it. And then this tool right here is called a borer. And this is what they're talking about goes into the tree trunk and you can see how old it is that way.
After our trip to the forest, I wanted to grow a tree of my own. Dad took me to the nursery, where you can buy flowers, shrubs, and trees. A nursery has trees that have grown big enough to transplant or plant into a new place. The nursery worker showed me trees that have flowers in the spring and fruit in the summer. We looked at trees with soft leaves and trees with pine needles. So she is look at a nursery, which is a place that you go to buy trees and flowers and plants. The nursery has all kinds of different trees that you can plant at your house or somewhere else. I chose a maple tree. My tree was already more than four feet high, which is a little taller than me. The nursery worker helped us choose a shovel to plant the tree. She recommended organic fertilizer to feed the tree as it grew. Then she went over to the instructions on how to plant my tree. So she chose this tree. This is called a root ball where all of the roots of the tree live, and that's how you plant it in the ground. And this is her talking to the worker about the instructions she needs to follow to grow a tree. I picked out a place in our backyard where the tree would have lots of sunlight and lots of room to grow. Then, Dad and I dug a hole with the shovel. The hole was as deep as the tree's root ball, and about three times as wide. We carefully lowered the tree into the hole. We loosened the burlap around the roots, burlap bag around the roots, and next we filled in the soil around the tree. I added the organic fertilizer to the soil and sprinkled mulch on top. Then I gave my tree a nice drink of water. So she dug the hole with her shovel. She put the tree inside the hole. She covered it up with the soil and mulch and then she watered it so it would grow. Dad asked an arborist to check the other trees in our yard. An arborist is like a doctor for trees. She pruned the branches of our, tr our big trees and with pruning shears. These tools that she has in her hands are called pruning shears, and pruning means that you snip off the pieces of branch that are growing too long so that the tree has more space to grow. She checked the trees for signs of disease. She also listened for bugs by using a stethoscope. She looked like a doctor. One of our oldest trees had been damaged by a storm. The arborist used a handsaw and a chainsaw to cut off two broken limbs. So here she's checking the inside of the tree to see if it's healthy. I asked the arborist to check my tree. She said it was doing just fine. She asked she added a stake to help it grow up straight. So she added these called stakes and they're connected through a string right here that is holding the tree in place so it will go straight up in the air. When the weather turned cold, my tree's green leaves turned bright red. Then they twirled down to the ground. The next spring, my tree grew buds that turned into leaves. Over the summer, it grew branches with more leaves. Its trunk grew thicker. So this picture is showing a close-up of the red maple branches with buds on them in the spring. So this is what the leaves look like before they turn into leaves. This is a leaf from my red maple tree. It has three lobes and that have sawtoothed edges. So the lobes are the things that stick out. So we have one, two, three in the stem where it connects to the tree. The bark is dark gray 
and rough with little ridges. So here's the trunk of what her tree looks like and its bark is dark gray. All summer I, want, I watered my tree and checked it for insects and it just kept growing. The arborist said that my tree could grow 60 feet high. That's taller than my house. Look at my tree now. It's much taller than I am. If I take good care of it, it will be around for a long, long time. A tree is a great friend to grow up with. It says, you can plant a tree too. Which tree would you choose? We have an oak tree, a palm tree, a pine tree, a weeping willow, a Japanese maple, and a sweet cherry tree. So which tree would you want to plant? I hope you guys enjoyed this book. I will see you guys later. Bye!